Today is Friday, and I'm going to the mosque for the Friday prayer after a very, very, very long time. This is the mosque, and you can't see whether it is much different than any normal building except these here, which is more of a, you can say, Islamic sign. there are two main aspects to religion when it comes to living abroad the first is the personal aspect it's what you do it's what you eat it's what you not eat it's what you drink what you not drink it's what whether you pray or you not pray that is the personal aspect it is what you do there's also a second aspect and that is not as much as so much as what you do but it's rather who you are it's your name it's your language it's your accent it's your skin color it's your upbringing it's where you were born it's how you say certain things it is this second aspect for a religion that makes you member of a club for example which comes with its privileges for example me as a Muslim I can go to anywhere in the world to a mosque and then I can sit down and then I can pray. I can meet any other Muslim and then I can say the Muslim greeting, okay, assalamu alaikum, and then it instantly breaks the ice. It is this second aspect that I cannot really escape from at all. Whether I like it or not, this is a part of my identity. But this is the point that I'm trying to make here, and that is that. It is this being part of a club that is at the same moment a privilege and it also comes with its possible risks. Let me give you my thought process when any terrorist attack happens. You hear something on the news, something bad happened and then immediately your first reaction is please, please don't be from Pakistan, please don't be from Pakistan, please don't be from Pakistan and then it's not from Pakistan, then you start praying, okay, please don't be a Muslim, please don't be a Muslim, please don't be a Muslim, please don't be a Muslim. And when both of these are true, then you feel like the collective weight of the world is on your shoulders. There is an inherent guilt that starts popping up inside of you that makes you feel that, okay, I, I gotta do something about that. Like it's somehow inherently my fault. And you could be, and you could be the most non-religious person in the world. You could not pray, you're far from religion as possible. But the fact that you have this second aspect, the one I talked about before, the collective aspect, the fact that you were born with a name and you were part of an identity, it makes you feel that, yeah, you're part of this. This is a reason why so many ex expats, whether they are from Pakistan or where, whether they are from Turkey or any other place, they tend to shift towards two extremes. Some people become extremely religious and some people just try to run away from it, whatever, as much as they can. But like all things in the world, the truth lies somewhere in between. We have to keep our roots intact because this is who we are but we have to also acclimate and accommodate according to the times that and the place that we are the truth of 
the matter is that you will never be able to detach from your roots. You can forget that. You can run away from that. But the world, that ain't forgetting.